Welcome to the meeting of the Governance Committee for Environmental Facilities Corporation, Monday, June 13th at 2 p.m. We have a, a large layer cake of uh, meeting today, so we're going to take it one bite at a time. Madam Chair, would you please do the roll call? Certainly. Uh, Mr. Corcoran. Here. Chair DeMarkey. Present. Mr. Krasansky. Oh, here. <laughs> and Mr. Zorowski. I'm here. We have all of the members of the committee, Madam Chair, and you have a quorum. That's wonderful. I'm glad that in addition to the quorum that we have all of you in attendance as the governance committee is only an annual meeting and uh, it is really important with lots of information. So, so thank you everyone for joining today. Our, we have nine motions today, and the last one being the adjournment and probably the easiest one. So we'll start from there. Our first order of business is to approve the draft minutes from the June 3rd, 2021 Governance Committee. Could I have a motion for that approval, please? So moved. And a second. Second. Oh, second time. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, our draft minutes passed. Again, one of the more easier motions for the day. So let's begin our annual review of our governance documents. And we begin with our bylaws. I am going to help people follow along for those on camera using our large compilated agenda. Okay, so the bylaws begin on page seven. So you'll wanna hit page seven. To start with, there are no proposed changes recommended to our bylaws. However, it is important that we just go down them and take a look as we run through the pages, which I will help do. So in the beginning, it defines our corporation, gives a little history as to how we were formed, gives our seal. Then we have article two, which defines the board members and the makeup of our authority. We move down to article three, the officers, employees, consultants. They're all there for, uh, for description. Um, sec uh, yeah. Article that's article three, number 12 also includes a, um, I'm sorry, I'm moving to my thing isn't, just bear with me. I'm gonna have to move you over just a tad bit so I can hit my button, my apology. Okay, and we have all our roles defined and section 12 also provides us with an indemnification, which we will also see later in our agenda as well. Section four describes all of our meetings. You can see they're very defined and we stay with those right down to the order of business and agendas. Article five presents the committees, including the one we're in. Section three is particularly this meeting and you can see that what we accomplish through the bylaws and we make sure we adhere to that and the rest on our corporate finance amendments and suspension of bylaws. We approved it last year at the prior meeting. So I would like to call for a motion to recommend to the full board the re-adaption of the bylaws as written for the full board. Could I have a motion please? So moved. Thank you. Second. Thank you. Any further discussion on our bylaws? I guess be just one question from my end, because as a newbie to this annual process, it may, this doesn't apply necessarily to the bylaws, but also to things like investment guidelines and other things as they come up. Do we revisit them? We revisit them once a year, but I met, you know, episodically if something comes, say, from the governor's office or some new guidance or some new issues. I mean, I assume we have that flexibility, right? It's not uh, only an annual sure. thing or is 
Absolutely. Yes, we do. Yep. Yeah. I'm not aware of anything specific now. I just want to make sure I understood the process. Any executive orders that would affect the right. guidelines or if a guideline needs to be changed for a particular circumstance, we have done that uh, throughout a year uh, out of sync of this meeting. Got it. Okay, that makes sense. Okay, any further discussion? Hearing none. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Any, abs any abstain? Hearing none, the motion passes to make the recommendation to the full board. Alrighty, moving along to our governance committee charter. You will find that on page 15. Okay, everyone's there. <laughs> All right, so this is great. It tells us that we have to meet at least annually. It does say in here, unless anything else comes up. So to your point, um, we have our committee membership. I'm just going to say that although we have, you know, just the members that should attend, I have always urged everyone to attend this meeting because we do go over so many things and it is a great time to have those discussions. Um, it also defines an independent member. You'll see that as well. Outlines our meetings. On page 16, we have our committee authority and responsibilities, right? And what section 74 of public officers law. And then also, on this page, number two through number nine are, provides us to update our various policies and to review them uh, as needed. So to your point, that's all in there. I would like to make a point that, um, uh, Adam, you haven't been with us that long, but we have the, the uh, EFC has spent a great deal of time over the past number of years, and particularly during COVID, looking at a number of our policies and revising language to be more clear, to provide clarity in its understanding, and also to reflect the way we actually conduct business. So a lot of changes has been made over the past couple of years. Done really great job on that as well. So that takes us from uh, two to number nine. Just making sure everyone has a moment to take a look at our authority and responsibilities. And that, that is it. Okay. There are no proposed changes this year to our governance committee charter. So I'd like to call for a motion to uh, recommend approval to the full board on acceptance of our governance charter. Could I have a motion, please? I'll make that I'll motion, make motion. I'll second. I'll second. <laughs> <laughs> Great minds think alike. Separated for Everyone wants to accept it. Um, <laughs> uh, is there any discussion on our charter? Okay. Hearing none, then let's vote. All in favor? The recommendation? Aye. Aye. Any abstaining? Any out opposed? I did that backwards. <laughs> Hearing none, the motion passes. All right. Then we move on to the review of our documents pursuant to the committee authority and responsibilities. All right. Just get to the page. Okay, this begins on page 19. I would like to just um, read the list and then we're going to just take a minute on our code of ethical conduct as well as uh, one more policy which we are going to make a recommendation uh, be removed from our list and why. So first of all, I'm just going to let you know so that you can follow along if there are any questions on them. Our code of ethical conduct on page 20. 
are equal employment opportunity. Uh, Madam Chairwoman, sorry, I'm Madam Secretary. Um, there's one thing, and it's not actually um, substantively in line in chronological order in the pages, but there is review of procurement of goods and services policy, which is ID number one under the board meeting yep. agenda. Um, yep, I'm aware. So I just wanted to make sure because the fundamental policy, I just wanted to make sure that we we got to that one as well on the agenda. Thank I you so much. Thinking. You're right. I did say um, I did say the code of ethics of the fundamental policies. Thank you so much. No problem. Just wanted to make sure we didn't miss anything. There's a lot on this one. <laughs> yeah. Okay, I sorry. Yep. Uh, so review of uh, the following documents, the procurement of goods and services policy. Yep, you're right. I did miss that one. So that is on uh, page 270 through 294. Okay, there are no proposed changes in this this year, but it is a document worth looking at. It has a number of uh, lists. It has <laughs> great acronym summary in it as well, which I love those. They're very handy. I've referred to it uh, for a number of things in the past. So bring that to your attention, Adam, that's often helpful. And then it does have a chart of our procurement. So it's a great reference document. Just letting everyone have a chance to look at it. Like I said, it begins on page 270 through 294. Alrighty. With no changes, I'd like to call for a motion to recommend the approval of the procurement guidelines, which will be presented to the full board meeting in ID number one on our meeting following the committee meeting. Could I have a motion, please? Thank you, Adam. Second. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, we will make that recommendation. Thank you, Madam Secretary. I turned my page before I did that. No worries, I'm amazed that you can keep track of so many. This, it was a big layer cake. Sometimes I just want to bite bigger bites. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> Take a little one, get bitten. <laughs> awesome, awesome. Okay, so now we go to our fundamental policies uh, and procedures on our agenda, which is 3C, and we have five un items under uh, 3C. Oh, we were in procurement and goods. Okay, fundamental policies and procedures. That is C2, and we have a long list of them. So I'm. The list is provided on page 19. So you can take a look at that. And I'm just going to read them. So indeed, you have the opportunity to look at them as we go. Okay. Code of ethical conduct 20, page 20, equal um, employment opportunity 27, Family and Medical Leave Act, page 40, Federal Drug Free Workplace Act, page 51. Outside activities, 53. Policy and procedures on procurement and lobbying, page 64. Sexual harassment in the workplace, page 73. Time and attendance, page 79. Whistleblower protection, page 104. Workplace violence prevention, page 105. And in addition, we have some uh, mandated statewide uniform policies, okay? State vehicle use policies on page 110, domestic violence in the workplace, page 118, equal opportunity in New York State rights and responsibilities. It's a handbook for employees, page 125. Statewide reasonable accommodation for applicants and employees with disabilities is on page 175. Statewide reasonable accommodations and program and services for individuals with disabilities is on page 208. 
and statewide reasonable accommodations of religious observance or practices for applicants and employees is on page 225. So that being said, let's take a look as is required on our code of ethical conduct. Let's take a review together. That is on page 20. Okay, so uh, here we go. Just taking a look at it. Ethical standards applicable to board members, officers, and employees. They are listed here for you. Just take a general look. It tells you everything that we need to know. Okay. Also, I want to mention that we do undergo ethics training periodically, which helps us with these, including ethical standards regarding board members, which is C on page 21. All right, board members, officers, all of the things I just want you to know on page 22, number seven, just a quick note at looking at two years after we serve and we're done that our obligations continue. Just take a little note of that as you're taking a look. And on D, ethical standards regarding conflict of interest. Again, I believe that our ethics training does a deep dive on that as we complete that on our periodic uh, years that we do that. All right, just scrolling down on executive orders, implementation violations, legal effect. Okay, thank you for taking that, that time for me with me to review that. We didn't want to read it all, but I do want to bring those pages to your attention. There are no proposed changes to it this year. Our second document, which is not included, is our waste fraud and abuse uh, reporting investigation of waste fraud and abuse claims. We are doing away with this policy this year. And uh, Madam President, you're going to tell the board and the members, the committee and the members in attendance, our rationale for that, please. It, it, excuse me, it was specifically required under ERA, which um, we no longer have short-term projects or projects that this that policy um, applies to anymore. Uh, so we don't need that specific policy, but that doesn't mean that we're not uh, on guard <laughs> for uh, any fraud or abuse that might be happening. It's just a policy specific policy. Okay. Uh, do you have anything else yeah. And just in case anyone's wondering, that's the American Recovery and Reinvestment Act for, for era specific projects. Okay. All right. Thank you. Seems clear. So I would like to call for a motion to recommend to the board the removal of the ARRA policy for reporting investigation of waste fraud and abuse claims from EFC's fundamental policies. Could I have that motion, please? I'll make that motion. Thank you, Francis. I need a second. I'll second. <laughs> Thank you. Any further discussion on that? I'd like to just mention, if I could, um, Kai, that I do, this would have been included, but we just found out before walking in here. Um, myself and the Human Resources Director will be attending um, training on June 23rd for um, to incorporate gender-based violence into our domestic violence in the workplace policy. And then they're going to be issuing a statewide policy to that effect. So that will be on June 23rd. So I wanna mention it now because it looks like it's coming quicker than we had anticipated. Oh, well, thank you for, that's perfect to bring it up. And if we have to amend that policy, we can certainly do that in a short meeting in a subsequent uh, a meeting. That's great. Well, I appreciate that heads up and enjoy that training because it's very important. Okay. 
Any further discussion? All right, hearing none, all in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Hearing none, we shall make that motion. All righty, moving on, we uh, now have our qualifications of appointed board members on page 245. So let's take a look at those. All righty, so we have uh, eight listed collectively possess experience and expertise. I always like to point out the wording on collectively because I think the strength of us individually might hit on a number of those eight listed um, subject areas, but together as a whole, we certainly collectively possess that experience and uh, our strengths together make us stronger as a whole. And I'm very appreciative for the board members and all of their skills. So I just want to bring that to your attention. Okay, next we have our uh, compiled results of the board performance evaluation and in accordance with ABO policy guidance 10-05, ABO consults with the committee on open governance which advised that a board discussion of its performance would constitute a matter of confidential which a matter which should be made confidential by state law that therefore should be conducted in private so given that i would like to make a motion to enter into executive session for a private discussion on the board performance evaluation could I have a motion for executive session, please? So moved. Thank you. Can I have a second, please? Oh, I, I can second that. Thank you. <laughs> There's another. You know, we're all in agreement. So I'm gonna skip the formality. <laughs> Any discussion? <laughs> Hearing none. Are all going to agree to go into executive session? Yes. Madam Secretary, you have given instructions and we shall enter executive session. Thank you. Yes. yes. Thank you. Thank you very much, Madam Secretary. Uh, there were no formal actions taken in executive session. We have one more document to review in our uh, review of our, our, our documents. It is the defense and indemnification provision covering state officers and employees. Oh, yeah. So that is on. That is on page 249. I think it is. Just one second. I did have a note I wanted to make on that. Nope. Okay. Does everyone have that? And there are no changes uh, to that and no update on its uh, status at, as well. Page 248. One's good there. Okay. Well, that concludes our review of our committee authority and responsibility documents. I'm going to ask for a motion to recommend approval by the full board of the policies and other required documents developed in connection with the governance committee's authority and responsibilities. This includes removal of the reporting investigation of waste fraud and abuse claims policy from the corporation's fundamentals policies, which we did already vote on. But with that, could I have a motion please? So moved. Thank you and a second. I'll second. Thank you. Any further discussion?
been a robust discussion on these documents. It's good that we take the time and look at them each year and always know that you have them at your fingertips to review throughout the year. It's a lot of good information that uh, and lists and, and other reference materials in there. So do keep them handy because they are a great reference. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion carries, we will make that recommendation. Thank you. We're almost done eating this big layer cake one bite at a time. <laughs> we now come to one of my more favorite parts of our meeting, which is the authority mission statement and performance measurements. So with that, Everyone know, well, not everyone, but many of you know that I do like to take the time and read our mission statement out loud. I know we've run out of time on this meeting, but it's an important meeting and it's only annually. So if you would turn to page 254, I know this is silly, but feel free to read out loud with me. Okay, so no one can say they don't know the mission of our, of our organization. Ready? The mission of the Environmental Facilities Corporation, Corporation is to assist communities throughout New York State to undertake critical water quality infrastructure projects by providing access to low cost capital, grants, and expert technical assistance. A primary goal is to ensure that these projects remain affordable while safeguarding essential water resources. We support this mission by consistently using an innovative approach to developing and advancing new financing strategies to maximize the funding that can be made available to our clients, aiding compliance with federal and state requirements and promoting green infrastructure practices. That's a lot to do every day, every single day that people come in and do this. And I was saying that you know, sometimes people are in the weeds and you have hard days or a tough client or a tough situation that you have to deal with. Just read that mission statement and look, ultimately, ultimately, you know, look at our performance measurement report. It's only, it's like a short summary that's, you know, an A plus document of, of everything that we accomplished. So it is, uh, it is amazingly, uh, important. We do have a change to this document this year, an amazing change for the better, I think. Uh, thank you for reviewing these with me ahead of time. But we've revised the wording of our performance goals. So Madam President, would you review them with us, please? Sure. So I don't know, and I was hoping to have a chance to go back and look. So I don't know when we adopted these, the current version of the performance goals. But when I looked at them for this year and I saw the first one being provide grants to water quality infrastructure projects, my first reaction was, ew, <laughs> that's what kind of goal is that? I mean, we provide grants to water infrastructure projects. So we took a, another look at um, all of our um, goals and we rewrote them with um, more in tune with what we're doing and looking at the uh, change in priorities or the, the broadening of priorities and what we're doing with the expanded um, funds in flux of federal dollars that are coming and some of the new, <coughs> excuse me, um, priorities. So the first provide grants to water quality infrastructure projects now have implement creative financial solutions for recipients with diverse demographic profiles to address water quality and public health needs. The second one was deliver consistent program performance while maximizing efficiency of operations. I like this one. It's what we, we do, but we broke that down kind of into a couple of others. So number two goal now is deliver distinctive value through technical and programmatic expertise in various aspects of all finance, finance projects. Looking at this is focusing in on the programmatic piece and uh, what we provide recipients. And then our number fifth goal will be um, 
dealing with the efficiency of operations and more the EFC centric <coughs> piece. Number three is also for recipients, engage communities to maximize use of EFC funding to protect the environment and public health. Four, provide funding assistance to improve water quality and mitigate the effects of climate change through green infrastructure, energy efficiency, water efficiency, and environmental innovation. And this one is really getting at kind of our uh, broadened focus um, yeah. on what we can do with um, the bill funding that's coming our way. And then number five, which is new, enhance organizational resiliency by embedding strong internal processes and quality review and our corporate strategies. And that goes along with bringing in Willand as a risk officer and really looking at our, <clears throat> excuse me, at our internal control processes and looking at, uh, you know, sustainability and succession planning and looking at our, our policies and internal processes, um, really looking at our processes for doing things in streamlining and bringing a lot more technology in the use of technology, both for efficiency in internally and also to help our clients. So those are the five goals. So we went from four to, to five. Well, I think the wording is really well, really good. I read them a number of times and um, what I like is that they're both external looking and internal looking. And they also have sustainability elements right in there because it's looking at finance, community people, and the environment, right? All in there. And then they have two of my favorite words, which is which are resiliency and innovation. So <laughs> well done. Well done on that reword. And I'm really looking forward to um, next year when we look at our performance measurement report and you report under each one, right? That should be, that, that, those demonstrations will be really uh, spot on, I think. Okay. Well, with that, I would like to call for the second to last motion of the day which is to recommend to the full board the performance goals listed in the mission statement to be approved by the full board. May I have a motion? I'll make a motion. And a second. Adam. Discussion. I will I will add my own discussion for forgetting this part in my presentation, which as uh, this document also has additional questions. Um, on it, which is on page 255. You can just take a look at those, please. And you can see that some of these answers, like two and four, come right out of our bylaws as well. So um, these are just our, our, our additional questions to look at. So I didn't want to miss them as part of the discussion piece. Any further discussion? Hearing none. All those in favor, aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstents? Any anyone abstain? <laughs> Hearing none, the motion passes for the board. Okay. Right. One more. One more, everyone, on page 256. A performance measurement report. Okay, there is no action needed with this except for reading it, right? Just read. It's really great summary, and they do match up with what our performance goals were before we revised them. But um, you know, I love me measurements in numbers and number of projects and amounts that we have done and. Um, as I've said in the past, I, I love to have other things counted, like how much pipe did we lay or how many permits were remedied, like all of these things add up to our accomplishments. This is a great document. Don't take for granted how hard it is to write five pages of our accomplishments, right? 
if they had more time, it would have been shorter. So five pages of our accomplishments summed up like this really strikes me. So I want to thank you for that <laughs> conciseness, but it is jam packed with stats. So please take the opportunity to read them. I also, <clears throat> I want to mention, um, and I've spoken with you, Vita, I think I've mentioned at a board meeting in the past that we are looking um, at metrics with respect to linear feet of distribution mains and storage and um, gallons treated. So we're still working on putting that in, in um, a way that makes sense. But one uh, thing that I did want to share at this one it, is we were looking at total miles saved with respect to um, cars driving. The, so we've got a number of people obviously that work remote now. So total miles commuting for 90 employees is 2,576 every pay period. So that's every two weeks. Total days working remotely for all staff in two weeks is 265. So total miles saved every two weeks is 8,346 miles. So that is awesome. Now, don't get mad at me. Can you convert that to CO2 saved by gas emission? You should be able to pretty quickly. I uh, know. There, there are ways you can do that. We just haven't done that, but yeah. we are working on that to put a presentation together on, you know, both on the EFC side, but more on our projects and, and working, um, you know, on greenhouse gas emissions, which is, is big, but, but first doing, um, you know, the metrics again on meters and yep. your feet and septics replaced and uh, things like that. That that is awesome. You know, I'm just I just love all that, and I I look forward to those calculations because that is just really strong. Um, that is a strong impact, and this organization makes a strong impact. Before I call for a motion to adjourn, I'm not going to thank people individually by name because I will definitely end up leaving someone out. But let me just thank each and every person who makes a difference by the work that you do here every day, that the weeds that you get into so that we can look at these big numbers and these summary stats and people in our state can, you know, have clean drinking water um, and a clean environment. That is what we're here to do. That is why we're doing it. And when, like I said, even on your hardest days, please remember the good work that you all do and how grateful the board is as well as the people in the state that that we all serve in our ways. Uh, thank you. Thanks. Uh, I was just meeting with uh, started divisional meetings and and Mike and I and we've been saying the same thing that what everybody does on a daily basis is so important uh, to so many people in the state. No matter what position you have, we all have a role to play here. And even if you have a bad day, um, hopefully there are not many of them because um, hopefully you get should be very proud of what we do here. What we do is very important and we do it very well. So thank you. I think thank you. Awesome. And remind people as much as you can because it really, really does make a difference. I'm going to go through the motion quickly. Does anyone else have anything to add for the meeting before discussion so I can just whip through it? Alrighty. All right. Thank you everyone for attending and for taking the time on all of these documents. Okay. There being no further business, can I have a call for a motion to adjourn the meeting? I'll make the motion. Second. No seconded. One last chance for discussion. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. I know no one's going to oppose. <laughs> With that, thank you for attending the governance meeting. The meeting is adjourned. <laughs>